wintertime region of rock and wind and snow, a rugged world of cold and isolation. Yet the snows that blanket this remote part of the San Juan Mountains are a treasure to all living things. In spring, the snow will melt to water the land, to fill the brooks, the creeks, and the rivers. Downstream, the waters form tributaries of the Colorado River, where man-made dams and reservoirs even out the erratic flows. If enough water can be stored in these reservoirs, cities of the Colorado River Basin states will not thirst. The crops will not wither. But water demands grow daily. Already, the Colorado River is inadequate to meet the expectations of early day planners. Again, man looks to his own efforts to increase the flow of water. Since the 1946 experiments of Dr. Vincent Schaefer, we have known that some clouds can be modified through seeding to yield additional precipitation. But reliable seeding techniques were hard to develop Sometimes seeding worked, and sometimes it didn't. In 1961, Congress directed the Bureau of Reclamation to begin a long-range study of cloud seeding, with the aim of eventually augmenting the nation's supply of water. The program, called Project Skywater, continues at many sites throughout the United States. Eventually, if the research program proves successful, the methods learned will become part of our nation's integrated water resources program. Enough is now known from field experiments to conduct a pilot project where test results are applied to a more extensive area. Because the need for water is so great, the Colorado River Basin was selected for the first major pilot project. Investigations showed that the San Juan Mountains in southwestern Colorado offer many suitable cloud seeding opportunities on clouds that form when moist air blows in from the southwest. Generators placed upwind could provide silver iodide particles that will flow with the air rising over the range. A storm with low speed winds could be seeded from generators a few miles away. High speed winds would require use of generators farther from the mountains. Research has shown that temperature is critical. Maximum snow crystal growth occurs at minus 15 degrees centigrade. If the cloud is too warm or too cold, seeding is not effective. The very tiny silver iodide particles act as nuclei around which moisture from the cloud will freeze. After a silver iodide particle has been in the cloud about 15 to 30 minutes, the snow crystal which has grown around it is large enough to begin its fall to the ground. Scientists who designed the pilot project for the San Juans built a model in a wind tunnel to study air currents over the mountains. Thirty-three silver iodide generators were then installed in selected positions upwind from the 100-mile-long target area. Headquarters for the project was placed at Durango, Colorado. The time is dawn. On a hill overlooking Durango, a Raywin sand is lifted aloft by a helium-filled balloon. The Raywin sand gives readings on temperature, pressure, humidity, wind direction, and speed as the balloon carries it to high altitudes.
Meanwhile, in Denver, a computer collects weather data from points all over the West. In the memory disks and in the tapes is formed a continuous picture of weather as it occurs. The picture is then transmitted by telephone lines to all experiment sites of Project Skywater. In Durango, at the office of the operations contractor, the broad weather picture emerges as a series of numbers. Hello? Hello, Art. Uh, Mark here. Uh, it's Sons in computer now, is there? Data obtained from the balloon-borne Raywinsons provide a last-minute check to assure that conditions are suitable. Running about uh, 195. It's been holding pretty steady through there. Okay, sounds good. It sounds like we're within specification. Thank you. Morning, Art. Morning, Owen. Looks like we've got an operational day coming up here. We have a strong, moist, southwesterly flow. The meteorologist and the project manager make sure each of the established preconditions is right before proceeding. As you know, the snowpack and uh, avalanche criteria are within the safe limits. Looks like precip's going to begin this afternoon about uh, 4 p.m. is my best. To measure seeding effectiveness during the research period, only half of the acceptable storms are seeded. The decision for each experimental day is obtained by access to a special computer memory bank. Hello. Hello, Harold. This is Art. Well, looks like we've got an operational day coming up today. And we'd like you to ignite your generator 1 p.m. this afternoon. Okay. Okay, thank you, Harold. Fire it up. Yes, operator. Uh, long distance, Pagosa Springs, please. This is Art. It's an operation. Yes, operator. Right, Pagosa Springs, long distance, well, please. Well, it's like we've got an operational day coming up today and have indicated to see. We'd like you to turn on your generator box. Thirteen of the generators lie far from any ranch house and are inaccessible in winter. These generators are controlled by radio from the Durango office.
target area is limited to about half of the San Juans, a high, remote cluster of peaks having few permanent residents. Details of weather are measured at many points. One meter even makes use of a ski lift to measure temperatures up and down a steep slope. In a mountain home, a housewife takes readings of background nuclei. This instrument determines the concentration of tiny particles, including silver iodide, that nature can use to build snow crystals on. But most of the data are recorded by over 200 remote stations spread throughout the San Juan. To keep project results objective, a completely separate contractor gathers data recordings from the weather stations. In sunshine or snowfall, the information must be picked up and the instruments checked at regular intervals. Many people wonder what the effects will be downwind. Will increased snowfall on the San Juans rob snow from the next range of mountains? Preliminary results from other seeding research show that the downwind areas may get increased precipitation when seeding is underway. The extensive pilot project data will help us learn more about precise downwind effects. All the information gathered is thoroughly checked and then transferred to computer punch cards. The 
the data are again checked for accuracy. Then at the end of each year, the data are recorded on a master tape. When the four-year pilot project is over, a different group will be given the task of evaluating the results, including a comparison of costs to benefits gained. Four winters are considered necessary to give enough data for solid statistical results. The San Juan Mountains are more than a rugged landscape that man can utilize for his own benefit. These mountains are the home for a profusion of plants and animals whose life systems are patterned by regular cycles of nature. In recent years, we have realized that man too depends on nature's cycles, that man must not disrupt nature's harmony. To learn more about how nature's system might be affected by cloud seeding, the pilot project research continues on into summer. Now, the emphasis is on ecology. These men and women seek to learn what effect nature's own variations in snowfall have on the plants and animals. All the research data are correlated with the amount of snow that fell during the previous winter. After four years of this study, the ecologists hope to know what small changes, if any, will occur in the plants and animals if cloud seeding is used to help even out the year-to-year -year pattern of snowfall. Students and scientists from many different states and from foreign countries are assisting in the program.
The San Juans are well known for rich deposits of silver. But silver occurs not only in veins. Almost every particle of soil in these mountains contains some natural silver. One phase of the ecological study deals with the possible effects of the tiny particles of additional silver that fall with seeded snow. Soil samples are removed and are taken to a laboratory for experiments. A small silver iodide generator provides test material that is added to water in known quantities. Water containing the silver iodide is then dropped slowly onto the soil samples at about the same rate as melting snow. Later, the soil samples are treated and tests run to determine how much additional silver the soil absorbed. Soil samples containing silver iodide are also tested to see if the silver traces have any effect on the important microorganisms that live in the ground. So far, the tests with traces of silver show no damage to the microorganisms, but hundreds of tests must be run to be conclusive. The warm touch of summer pauses but briefly on the lofty mountain slopes. All too soon, the nights grow chill, and blazing colors announce the season's change. Most of the ecologists will leave the San Juans, but many other men and women will remain, for they make their homes near this lofty range. For the residents, a mountain winter is an exhilarating experience. small mountain town, Silverton, struggles each year with its burden of snow and cold. A highway that is a scenic delight in summer can be a nightmare during a winter storm. or the highway can be blocked by an avalanche. Although the small mountain towns and much of the highway system are outside the target area, project officials are concerned about possible adverse effects of snowfall on man and on the environment. In particular, the scientists wish to know what conditions trigger avalanches. Avalanches most often occur down natural chutes where wind-blown snow tends to collect. To avoid disaster, the dry powder snow avalanches are often deliberately started by shooting them with artillery. But it's difficult to guess correctly just when an avalanche is ready to run. Above a number of the worst avalanche courses, the nation's highest weather station was erected and put into operation. In future years, this remotely operated station will collect data on wind speed and direction, temperature, snowfall, rime ice accumulation, and solar radiation. Data from this station and from other instruments and study plots will be carefully correlated with the occurrence of avalanches on the slopes below. With experience, project scientists hope to learn what weather conditions immediately precede an avalanche. In midwinter, a few ecologists will come back to find out how much the amount and the timing of snowfall affect the winter range of Rocky Mountain elk.
With the return of the cloud seeding specialists, the pilot project reaches full cycle. And once again, clouds are forming in the mountains on a moist southwest wind. 